Where life I dabbled in crazy weight Before rap I was crazy straight Partner I'm still spending money for 88 <laughs> Man you already know what it is Jay Williams let's live life And we're back Shut up Tony Happy Monday, happy Monday, happy Monday. Let's get this week started. Got to thinking about a whole bunch of things. As y'all know, I'm a thinker. I think a lot. I got to think it back. I like to try to like categorize my life. Like sit down right where I was at each year, defining moments from that year. And I came across a couple different dudes that I hadn't thought about in a very, very long time that I said, you know what? Oh, no, no, no. I got to speak on this. Today, we are going to get into how do I even title this? Finding out someone's charges ain't right. Finding out somebody that uh you've been around is a tinkerer, likes to touch things, touch people against their will. You know, it sucks out here that paperwork is not checked. But you can't blame me for that. Just like can't nobody take credit for checking paperwork out west. That's just what they do. You're going to program according to where you get locked up. With me being on the east, I fall under the east coast politics. Now, I am going to make sure that I know who I have around me. That I got to know. But even then, you can get lied to. You can get tricked. Especially back in the, say, you know, 2004, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 before things became so available, before you could just type, you really had to have somebody out here in the world put in groundwork to go get that. And people would tell you, yeah, I got you, I'm gonna pull it up for you, call them back. Oh man, get around to it yet. I need you to find out about this dude. I got you, I got you, call them back. Man, the kids have been bad. Man, me and the baby mama's arguing. It's hard to get people out here in the streets to do things for you while you're locked up. And then you find out that this dude who told you he broke into a bunch of houses and stole cars and guns and all these other things is really a predator. You know, being a father, those type of guys and those situations hit different for me. Because I know what I would do if somebody victimized or hurt one of my children. We wouldn't be making these videos. The news would be making videos about me. So I never liked... Anybody who had them weird charges. I don't care what your excuse is. Everybody's innocent. Nobody did it. Like I told you, I think I've met two guys in all of my time that actually admitted that they did some weird old shit. But you never really know who you're around. And today, I'm going to get into a couple situations of when uh, guys that everybody thought was solid, their papers came out. They got exposed. It's even worse. I'm going to speak on a dude named Bash today. When you're part of an organization or a gang. And they find out that. You're not who you appear to be. Not only have you lied to them. And lied to everybody else. You've made them look really bad. You've made it appear that. They're okay with the. Weird stuff you was doing that got you locked up. So that's what we're doing today When the things that happen in the dark come to light Being exposed When your paperwork comes out When them, when them documents drop <laughs> Weird ass dudes in this world man How could you find A child Or someone that's not interested in you How could you look at a person like that I'm I guess if you're not wired like that, it's not for us to get. But let's get into it. You know how to see it. You know how to live it. So let's relive it. Up here, picking my little man up from school. Good times. So with a lot of these guys, man, you don't, especially with the quiet guys, the new guys, you don't know much about them. You can look at them. Man, looks like a killer. Don't mean he's a killer. Hmm. Man looks like a chomo. Don't mean he's a chomo. You know, it's sad that the basic 
description of a chomo is an older white guy. That's the truth. So if you go to prison, seven counts of homicide at 19 years old and you're a white dude, you better hold your own until you get into your 50s and 60s. By the time you hit your 50s and 60s, just based off of the fact that you're an old ass white man, the general census, the general population is going to think, oh man, old white man locked up. Yeah, he did something wrong. Let's take it back to the jail days. In the jail, you really didn't know why a lot of those guys were in there. Those guys would come, go. You see new faces all the time. But the problem with the jail is a lot of those cases make the news. So you might be around somebody and not know why that person's locked up. And they'll be watching the news one day and be like, there he is and there he is. Now you got to be kidding me. That's the story I'm going to start off with. This jail I was in at the time, you had to go up this little staircase and they had a higher platform and that was where the feeding area was. That was where we ate. There was all these tables up there. Then down at the bottom, you had three TVs. And they had these rubber chairs that sat in front of them. And some guys would go sit down there and eat their meals. And some guys would sit up at the table. Sometimes they would do feeding at 6.30 in the morning. Sometimes if they were running late, it might be 7. On this day in particular, it's like 6.30, maybe 6.40. We're eating chow. I'm sitting up top, sitting with two Petersburg dudes and a Richmond dude. Early in the morning, we're really not making a whole lot of conversation. Over that weekend, a whole bunch of new guys had came in. And when I mean a bunch, you're talking 15, 20 new faces. The jail just flips constantly. Guys are always coming, going. It's never consistently the same people for the most part. We're sitting up there eating. I remember I'm asking dude something about trading something on my tray for something on his. Might have been like pancakes for his boiled eggs. But doing some type of swapping, trying to swap it out with this dude. And there's an older black dude sitting a couple tables over from me. Angry ass looking man. Midnight black, Pepsi black. Freshly poured pavement black. This dude was black as hell. Sitting with a group of dudes. Just came in this weekend not talking to anybody. Then you got the dudes down there watching TV. Sitting here, not doing a whole lot of conversating. It's early morning status. And I feel the presence of somebody walk behind me. So I look and it's this younger dude that was sitting down there watching TV. Walks up to the table where old Wesley Snipes is sitting and fires off on him. Drops this man. Starts just giving the one twos to him, working him over. Not a single word was said. These two had never spoken to each other never had any interactions at no point in time and this young dude just comes up in just goes to wailing on this dude got him in the floor the dude gets to his feet he's a good sized man grabs a hold of young and just starts you know what I mean like don't put your hands on me starts beating on him messes him all up we had a guard I've talked about before named Sampler or we called him big young and just big dumb dude like 22 23 always bragging us about the clubs, the females, and the cars he had. Come on, bitch. You're a guard at a jail. You ain't living like that. Maybe he was. Maybe I'm just hating. Sampler's working his shift. Sampler didn't like doing paperwork. He didn't like having other officers in there. Things ran pretty smooth when he was in there because he really didn't care. It was great when he came on. O'Head is now dusting his boy off, got him pinned up against the table, and his hurting him. I mean, each one of them punches is doing damage. Sampler is 6'3", maybe 6'4", probably 260. Muscle body, big square head dude. Comes running over there and grabs over here and slings him. Tells him, y'all stop that. He doesn't call no backup. Doesn't call no more officers. Doesn't write nothing up. Tells them both, y'all go to y'all cell, y'all's child's over with. By now, we done all stood up, moved out the way to fight because it's going down we sit back down dudes rush over to oh his tray grab his little items off a tray grab his milk different dudes you know scavengers little roaches grab their food up dude goes in the cell oh he goes in the cell 
Well, they got to pop the youngin' cell to let a cellmate in. Same with the old head. Youngin's got a whole bunch of homeboys. Yo, what's up, man? Why you just attack the old dude? You didn't give us no heads up, no warning. No nothing. What happened? Why you attacked the old man? Tell me why this youngin' sitting down there watching the news, eating his jail tray, slopping down this slop, and the story comes across the news of that man right there having raped a young woman. When I mean young woman, I'm talking a child under the age of six years old. They were going to talk about how this little girl was still in the hospital, was still recuperating from the damage she, she uh, sustained from the assault from this grown man that was carried out and carried through. I don't know how he knew the little girl. I don't know much more than what I just told y'all. But that young dude that was sitting down there was related to that girl. And as he sat there finding out what had happened to one of his family members, he didn't know. He hadn't been on the phone. Nobody had contacted him. He found out from watching the news. And as he sat there in disbelief of what was taking place, he looks up and there sits the man. His aunt is on TV crying about the ordeal. And that man's sitting there just eating his food like, like he didn't just violate somebody in the worst possible way. And young him went upside his head. It would go from him fighting with the old dude and the old dude. When I say old, this man was probably in his 50s. Bigger dude. Um, pretty cut up. It would go from him and that man fighting and the old man actually whooping the youngin to youngin telling all his homeboys what had happened. And he's standing in his doorway snapping, crying. And he's got a good little squad of Petersburg's dudes with him. You're talking better part of anywhere between 8 to 12 dudes standing there talking to him. And they mobbed up. Went down there and this dude knew. He had to know this was coming. Just with him being in that weekend, he's observed the room. He's seen the people in here. He's seen the young and stays with a little click. It went from him and him fighting to him and all his homeboys going down there and running up in that cell to the point that the cell was so crowded with dudes stomping this man beating this man, spitting on him, that there was other dudes that couldn't even get through the door to attack him. And as dudes started coming out the cell, dudes that hadn't had their turn yet made their way into the cell to the point that Sampler had to do paperwork. They damn near killed that man in that cell. Blood everywhere. When I'm talking about crime scene, this is the definition of a crime scene. Dudes coming out with their, their knuckles split from his teeth. They, put, they pulled that dude out of that cell on a gurney. You know, the gurney boards, they brought him in the stretcher, put the board up underneath him and lifted him up, put him on the, on the gurney and pushed him out of there. This is no lie. As they were pushing this man out the pod, it left a trail of blood from where he was leaking out of his body. They locked him and a couple of the other young dudes up and sent them off to the hole. And to me, that was admirable. They should have they should have killed that man in that cell. I do not know how much time the man went on to get. I never seen him again, never seen Youngin again. They went to different parts of the jail. I'm sure they got put on a keep away list. But just like that, sitting there eating breakfast and you have no clue that you're eating breakfast with a monster. They didn't say the little girl's name, didn't show a picture of her, but I guess by the aunt getting on the news channel and speaking up her nephew was sitting right there and watching like yo that's my aunt which means do right true story indeed man watch the ones you have around you and more importantly please please watch the ones you have around your children Now, I wasn't even going to tell that story. That popped into my head as I was thinking about Bash's story, but I felt that story needed to be told. Let's get into the next story. These are stories I don't really like telling. I don't like thinking back on the, the predators and the guys that we had to be around at times. Like I said, 
There is no special yard here in Virginia for these guys. There was at one time a prison that they housed them in. Then they shut that prison down and they flooded all the other prisons with these, these weirdos, these sickos from all throughout the state. So at one point we knew who a large majority of these guys were because they tried to put them in one building. One particular building just housed the sex offenders. They had their own yard, their own canteen. Like they, they kept them away from us. But over time, like anything else in prison, that fell apart. They started getting moved here, moved there, moved these guys, moved these guys, and everybody got integrated together. Now, people will talk quick about, oh, I would never be around nobody. I would not. Uh, if you haven't killed one, you haven't stabbed one, you haven't beat one up, you haven't done any of that, then miss me with all the what you would do. The average man is not going to go kill that man for crimes he committed and throw the rest of his life away for that piece of trash. You may beat him up, but he's not gonna go over there and just take his life from him because now he's gonna spend the rest of his life in here. It's not like the movies. You don't just get away with it. I've told you, somebody's always watching. Somebody's always listening. Very seldom can you actually do something and nobody see it. And if you get caught, they don't go, oh man, a man was a weirdo. There ain't nobody worried about that. No, the way they look at it is, that is a human being, you took his life, or is he gonna take yours, or are you gonna spend the rest of yours in here? So before we even get started with the story, I don't wanna hear the what you wouldn't do, because you would. I talked about Shakur in one of my stories, right? Shakur was this tall ass black dude, he got into it with these, these Spanish dudes out on the soccer field one day. They were gonna chop Shakur up because Shakur kicked an older dude in his shin and dude just started kicking him in his shin, it was a crazy ordeal. Shakur had a selling name, Bash. Bash, let me paint the picture for Bash. Bash was maybe 24 years old, Asian and black. That was his race, that's his mixture. I don't know what type of Asian. You could barely tell it, but I knew this because he had told other guys that he had Asian in him. Shakur ends up going to the hole behind the whole ordeal out there on the soccer field with him and the Spanish guys. They were ready to butcher him for messing with Pops, right? We get a blood dude in our pod. This blood dude has rank. Now, before we go any further, let me make this very clear because I get this, this question a lot. Do gang members do background checks on their gang? They will tell you yes. Some of them do. Not always. Do they know for 100% facts? Now, I'm talking about over here. Miss me with the Cali. I'm not out in Cali. Cali handles things the way Cali handles things. Over here, do they check into these guys 100%? No. Do they pull their entire history to find out what they've done in life? No. They're more concerned with having numbers. They're more concerned with, if a war pops off, do we have 20 guys because those are 20 guys that had good paperwork? Or... Well, we'd rather have 400 guys, and you know what? I'm not really worried about the paperwork, as long as he's solid. That's what it is. Guys will tell you one thing, and everybody believes it. You can start a rumor about yourself, and in due time, you don't have to say it no more. People will believe it. If I would have went to prison and right out the gate said, man, I got three bodies in a life sentence. If I say that to people over a period of four or five months, Six years from now, what's Jay locked up for? Oh, man, he got 12 bodies and seven life sentences. The rumor carries itself. Guys will paint a picture of why they're locked up, and it's a lie. A whole lot of those guys that got bad charges, guys aren't just saying, hey, yo, what's up, man? I'm such and such. How you doing? I got a rack of bad charges. No, they're not going to say that. They're going to lie. They're going to spin it. They're going to paint another picture because at the end of the day, they don't want to be preyed on. They don't want whatever they did to happen to them. So they're going to lie about their charges. Bash was a guy that had lied about his charges. Bash said he had a whole bunch of breaking and enterings. Bash supposedly stole a bunch of guns out of a house. Bash supposedly stole cars in the streets. These are the things other guys said about Bash. He was a quiet dude. He did not bother a lot of people. He did not kick it with a lot of people. 
Shakur goes to the hole, in comes this gang member. Right out the gate, I seen what Bash was. Bash was more of a follower. He was not a leader. He was not somebody that was going to take charge. Because as soon as this dude moved, moved in the cell, I see Bash is going to the ice machine and coming back with two cups of ice. I mean, his old boy is done sending him over there to get ice for himself and him. He's making food. He's doing all these things that, and you got me messed up. What do I, I look like Martha Stewart. Do you ain't about to make your food? Bash is making all this dude's food. I knew, you know it, you see it coming, you've done time long enough, you know when a non-affiliated dude of that caliber that's not gangbanging gets put in a cell with somebody that does gangbang, it's like the clock is ticking until you see him squatted up with all the gang members because he can't think for himself. A gang is the perfect world for him. Him not being a leader, him not being a stand-up guy, him not being one to take charge, Oh, he fits right in the, I'm going to join a gang criteria. Nothing against the gangs, talking about this situation and these type of guys. A whole bunch of stuff transpires, right? These blood dudes were constantly getting into it with other dudes, whether it be because they would extort somebody and that person would say, man, I ain't having this no more. Or they would get to beefing with other gangs or beefing amongst themselves. There was always something going on with them and within their organization. Prison at times will throw your ass under the bus. They will let everybody else know what you did without letting them know what you did. They put this paper on the bulletin board stating that per DOC policy, all sex offenders must be registered while in Department of Corrections, must fill out this form, this paperwork, known addresses, family members, Prior to being released, they make they put this paper up there and they take they tell everybody on such and such day the counselors are going to start calling in the sex offenders and y'all are going to fill out these papers until we've got everybody documented. When I'm telling you, you could see the worry in the room, and you knew instantly a lot of guys have been lying about their charges. You could see it as guys walked up to that bulletin board, read that piece of paper. Some dudes was like, oh, shit. They about to throw your ass on blast. We about to know who's who now, right? And then some guys will walk up and read the paper, and you can see the concern in their face. Like, oh, man, the gig's up. I didn't steal cars. I didn't break in houses. I got bad charges, and they're going to call me to the counselor's office in front of everybody, and they're going to know. And the way they do it when they do these type of things is... Anytime there's something big like this taking place, and that's a big thing in prison, to have everybody that's got a bad charge have to go to the counselor's office and register, and they call in one person after the other, after the other, after the other, because then you can sit there and go, pow, 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 every single one of them got bad charges. This day in particular, they start calling dudes. And some of these dudes we knew had bad paperwork. Some of these dudes have been slapped up. Some of these dudes have been extorted. For the most part, each and every one of them at some point or another had been dealt with according to their bad charges. Bash goes ahead and becomes blood. Kicks it with the bloods, parlays with the bloods, is doing all this, doing all that, Sue Wu and you know what I mean, all the blood calls, throwing up blood gang signs. Six months has passed since he's been in the cell with his blood, dude, and he's now become blood. And now this memo has come out. The day comes around that they start calling these dudes and making these dudes go in that counselor's office and fill out all these papers and the fine details of who their known associates are, where they plan on going home to, where they were living when they got locked up. Do they plan on staying in this Virginia? Do they have relatives in other states? They want to keep track of these guys starting with them being in prison where they can get the most information about a person. As I said, they start calling the known offenders. Dudes are looking at him with chomo piece of shit. Look at him. Slap shit, take his shit when he gets back. They call Bash his name. He doesn't come out the cell. He's in the cell. I don't know what he's doing in the cell. Watching TV, making old boy something to eat, picking cheese between his toes. Who knows? They come over to the loudspeaker, such and such, report to the counselor's office. You see everybody in the room that thought this dude was solid. 
everybody in the room that thought Bash Bash broke in a bunch of houses Stole cars, stole guns Like, he's a street dude, what y'all mean Bash? They call his name two or three times He's still in the cell I believe he had his headphones on Somebody goes up there and gets him Hey, the counselor wants you in the counselor's office For what? He knows for what, but he's got to play stupid. He's got to play like, oh, no, they was calling me in there for something else. Uh, I'm not like them other dudes, man. Yeah, I know. I know the 15 guys that went in before me had sex offenses, and I was the 16th to get caught in. But this was something non-related to anything they had going on. That's BS. Everybody knows they're strictly calling in sex offenders. If your name got caught in there, you're a sex offender. He makes his way, and as he's walking, he's, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why they calling me. I, no, I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't mixed up with none of this weird stuff these dudes got going on, man. These dudes are tripping. Well, why would they call me in a counselor's office knowing they got the sex offenders going in there? Gonna make me look bad. She gonna hear about this. I'm about to stay anywhere. I'm gonna snap on her. This is what he's saying as he's walking down the tier and there's this door that opens and then there's a counselor's office, another office, a little area they wash clothes. He makes his way on through the door. Well, you got a dude named New York that cleans up back there. He washes clothes. You can pay this inmate, and he will wash your clothes. Your clothes don't have to get sent off and washed with, you know, all the rest of these nasty-ass dudes' clothes. Your clothes can be individually washed and dried by themselves for a small fee. He hears, but eavesdrops, and constantly knows what's going on in that counselor's office because he's working right outside of it. Bash comes back out and tells him, no, nah, man, they had something messed up with my paperwork she wanted to talk to me about. You was in there a while. Don't try me like that. Don't play me like that. I told you something messed up with my paperwork. It had nothing to do with this, and that's why she called me in there. All right. New York knows better. New York is right outside the office. Have been watching them dudes go in there, watch their file get pulled, watched every single last one of them fill out the same forms, get asked the same questions. New York watched Bash go in there and fill out them same forms and get asked them same questions. He's a sex offender. And before Bash could come out and go tell his cellmate what was going on, New York came from the laundry area and went down to where the blood dude was and said, look. And New York was a more of a quiet dude, but a dude that was known to push that blade. Kept one hidden in the laundry area. Would give you the business if you wanted it. So he could pretty much say what he wanted. He wasn't scared of no gang members. He went down to the blood dude's cell and said, hey, look. I'm going to let you know before boy comes out of there and tries to spin the bullshit on you. Your homeboy's a sex offender, man. He's straight up in that office right now filling out the same paperwork that everybody else is winning there today is filled out. That's what he's in there doing. Check into who you got around you. Good looking, man. I'm going I'm to highlight him and see what's up with it. Dude comes back. Bash comes back and he makes that little announcement. No, nah, they had my paperwork messed, messed up, blah, blah, blah. Cellmate standing at the door. Cellmate at Bash is going in the cell either way. Cellmate standing at the door. Watch him come down the tear. Bash gets the door. He moves out the way. He goes on in. And dude pushes the button. When the button gets pushed, the door closes. From all of us sitting down watching this take place, we know that if he just shut that door, two things are going down. One, he's about to hurt him, and he don't want nobody else to be, he don't want nobody to be able to see what he's up there doing. Or two, he wants some privacy while he hollers at this man. Whatever they talked about when the door was closed, they talked about. I'm assuming he, you know, confronted him about, why are you going to the counselor's office filling out sex offender paperwork when you told us you was locked up for this, this, and this, and this? Now, Bash ain't no small dude. At 24 years old, he'd been locked up like four years, maybe five. I know he got locked up. He got in trouble when he's 19. At this point, he's 24. So he's been down four or five years. He started hitting the weight as soon as he got to prison. At 19 years old, if you start lifting steel, you will blow up. Bash had some good size to him. It was a short, regular dude. Dude shuts the door. After about five minutes, no fight takes place. There's no yelling. There's no commotion. Bash comes on out the cell, goes and talks to some dudes. Now nah, they had me mixed up. I ain't got nothing to do with that. Y'all know better, man. I ain't no sex offender. For the most part, it seems like it's been forgotten about. It hasn't been forgotten about. The dude he's in a cell with has rank. I've told you, these dudes get in these gangs at times, and the gang don't know. But once the gang finds out, they do something about it. Like, if they find out that you got bad charges, that's when they're going to act on it. It's crazy to think they would take a 
convict, a man that's locked up's word, because we're all in here for doing wrong. So you're going to just believe whatever this guy says? They take his word. Believe him, just like anybody else. His cellmate does not. His cellmate calls somebody, gets them to check in on who Bash is, and it comes back real bad. Comes back that Bash's sister actually babysitted a whole bunch of kids. One of the things where they do hair and watch kids out the same house, one of those unlicensed, I run a babysitting company but has no CPR certifications, no nothing, just drop your kid off at my house and for $40 a day, your kid's got a place to stay. One of those type of gigs. There was a big deal about this. Like this stuff made the media, made the news. It was known about. Bash's sister watches a whole bunch of kids for different people. Calls herself babysitting these children. One of these little kids comes out and says that he's been touching me. Talking about Bash. The parents get involved. The police get involved. So then they send the people in to talk to the other kids. And come to find out. For quite a while now this dude had been tampering, molesting. Touching people's children. I know, it sucks. There are sick people in this world. He had been doing this for a while. So you're taking your child and you're dropping them off with this girl. And your kid's supposed to run around and play, eat yogurt, do arts and crafts. But she's got a brother that lives in the house that's... I don't know if he was younger when it started. Or if he got caught when he was just at that age and it just started. I just know that the brother lived there and everything came out that he had been molesting all these little kids now I'm not going to say all but I know it was like five or six different kids that he was convicted for touching on dude gets off the phone and calls a meeting now whenever they would usually once a week call a meeting on the yard mandatory meeting the gangs had every week at least once a week it was just like Sundays you would see the bloods down there when you seen the blood squatted up it was like, damn, is everybody in a gang? Because it's so many of them that when they click up, you see it. Like, you're talking hundreds of guys all gathered in a big group and somebody standing in the middle talking. We're all on the yard, and I don't know if Bash had any intuition, any gut feeling, but he went out there like it was just another day, not knowing his cellmate knew. His cellmate had done told a couple of the other dudes that had some rank about Bash, about the fact that he was a whole entire weirdo sicko. They get out there and they get to having their meeting, and Bash is front row, front line, standing right up there. His cellmate, his homeboy, is the one speaking. And he doesn't announce what they're about to do to Bash. It's almost like a bunch of these other dudes knew what was going down and Bash had no clue. It's a good name for him too, Bash, because they bashed that ass. But he's standing there and the blood dude is talking and he's looking around at dudes as he's talking about things they need to fix and things within their organization. When one of the dudes that's standing next to Bash just hits him in his face. Boom! This how he grabs him and they, now he's in the middle of all these men. From the outside, if you're just walking by, you can't really see what's going on, just that there's a tussle in the middle. They've got Bash on the ground, and they're stomping him. I'm talking jumping up and down, stomping off his head, stomping him. Anybody and everybody that wanted a lick, wanted to get at this dude, got at him. Makes his way to his feet, goes up to the gate where the guard's at, which is to call gate break. Just, you're outside for two hours every Halfway through it, an hour into it, they come and do a gate break. So if you want to go in, you can go in. Now, he can't tell the guard, I'm a sex offender, also a gang member. They just found out, and pretty much everybody stomped me. He's got to make an excuse on what happened. Whether it be the classic, I caught an elbow while playing uh, basketball, I was running track and fell. Whatever it is, he comes up with an excuse. They take him upstairs to the sergeant's office. The sergeant looks at him. He's messed up. He's all type of lumped up. Got lumps where lumps aren't supposed to be. Contusions, cuts, bruises, abrasions. He looks like an entire gang just stomped his ass. He won't tell on anybody. The sergeant knows he's a gang member. He sees him mobbed up with a gang member. So you know what he's going to do? Whatever you got going on is gang related. Gang, you done did something wrong. 
That's why you gang beat your ass. So I'm not going to put you in the hole. You're not going to tell on nobody. And I told y'all at this time, you had to tell on somebody to check in. You're not going to tell on nobody. We'll send you right back in the general population. Comes back downstairs. Dude has already got bashed of stuff rolled up. Meaning he's taking all his belongings. Put them in the middle of a sheet. Tied in a knot. And push it out of cell. Go find a new cell. Now, you cannot associate with this guy. Here's the thing about being X'd out as a gang member. It's one thing for them to X you out and say, we're done with you. It's another thing for them to X you out and still not like you. And tell the rest of the population why you're locked up because you violated a whole bunch of children. So moving forward, you can't talk to Bash. If you talk to Bash, you are now kicking it with a known sex offender. If you talk with Bash, you are now enemies of that gang. So he has nobody, and we watch him heal up. He ends up moving downstairs with an old man. We watch him heal up over time, eat by himself. Nobody talks to him. He would talk to the other dudes that had weirdo charges. He would talk to the other dudes that ended up going up there and signing them papers. Let me tell you what ultimately happened to Bash. When I left prison, the last time I seen Bash, Bash had been turned into, how do I say this, a female. Bash had a man. The only way Bash could, because them blood dudes were just, anytime they wanted something, they went and took it from him. You made us look bad. You're, you're a chomo. Go down there and slap Bash around and take it from Bash. Hey, Bash got commissary? Hey, go run that bag. Go get that bag for me. They would extort him, rob him, beat him up, slap him up at random. And the only way he could stop that was to get up underneath a sure enough header. And the dude probably paid for Bash. Most likely for that dude to be able to claim Bash as his, he had to go to the gang and say, hey, I'm going to break off some money. She's mine. I said it. She's mine. Leave her alone. Don't rob her no more. Don't beat her up no more. She belongs to me now. Here's $150 in commissary. So we got X'd out. And then got uh, turned out. It's crazy when you look back on these things. If you're one of those weird dudes, you watching right now, and you've got any inclination or, or bright ideas that you're going to violate somebody, mess with somebody's child, hurt a woman, hurt somebody, stop. First of all, don't do that. Don't. Secondly, there is a place for you. There are people that cannot wait to give you what you deserve if that's what you do. These are the things you're going to deal with. Who wants to be anywhere near a person that's done like done something like that in life? Not me. They didn't tell me when I was young to commit crimes that when I got locked up, I was going to have to be around everybody. Not just guys that break in cars. Nah. Not just stick up kids. Nah. You're going to be around the worst of the worst. I guess it's fair to say what goes around comes around. Because the same thing that got Bash locked up ultimately became his life. It ultimately became what he would deal with day in and day out. He went from being the victimizer to being the victim. Thought he was going to be this tough guy, put on his persona, lie about his charges, join this gang, and then they found out. And then it ended bad. I know the man had a lot, a lot, a lot of time. And y'all can judge me, say what you want. Lord willing, I hope that he's still getting everything that he deserves to this day. I don't enjoy doing these type of videos. I don't like talking about children being harmed, women being harmed. But the reality of it is there are some sick twisted people in this world. People that do not look at children the way that we do. I love doing stuff with the nonprofits. I love doing stuff with my kids, with other kids. It is beautiful to see children just grow up and just be kids. Like I miss so much of my childhood that I live my childhood through my kids and through other kids. And it's a beautiful thing to see them be kids, but to think that there's somebody out there that looks at the kids differently than I do, it's uh, beyond disturbing. And it's warning to anybody watching, whoever has had that thought or thinks they're going to do something like that, you've got something coming to you when you get 
caught and you will get caught. And I hope that everything that Bash got, Bash is getting, you get as well. They say only God can judge me, right? Huh. Maybe you ain't never heard of a judge or a jury because they judge as well. And they ultimately will decide what happens to you. Anybody's watching this that knows Bash, what if ever makes it to Bash, Bash, you're a piece of shit and you're where you belong. People, watch it, children. Don't just take your kid and drop them off anywhere because it's $20 cheaper and that's what you can afford. Can you afford to go through the rest of your life knowing that your child was hurt or victimized because that was the, what you could afford? That was the cheapest route? I know everybody ain't got money, but you make sure that your kids are in the right hands. You make sure that you know who comes and goes from where your children are at. That's not something you uh, you jeopardize or you risk. <sighs> it never gets easier. No. But anyways, these jails, the detention centers, these prisons, these facilities, they're all just crazier worlds inside of a already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. Just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams, Let's Live Life. And to all my real ones and the awesome real ones watching, because y'all still watching me. Man, y'all know how we do. Salute.